We're on problem 28. Four pumps began draining a 5,400-gallon pool. At the same time, two pumps began draining a 4,000-gallon pool. Assuming that all of the pumps drain at the same rate, at the same rate, how many gallons are left in the smaller pool, so in the 4,000 gallon pool, when the larger pool is finished being drained? And notice they didn't tell us how fast the pumps work. So let's just assume that. Let's say that each pump drains at x gallons, x gallons per minute. So four pumps will drain at 4x gallons per minute. Two pumps will drain at 2x gallons a minute. So how many minutes does it take to drain the 5,400 gallon pool? Well, it'll be 5,400 gallons, I'll just write g's, or let's say gallons, divided by x gallons, or actually 4x, because we have four pumps, 4x gallons per minute. And what is this equal to? If we divide the numerator and the denominator by 2, actually, let's just divide by 4. 4 goes into 5,400. 4 goes into 5 one time. 1 times 4 is 4. Bring down the 1. 4 goes into 14. 3 times, 3 times 4 is 12. And we have a 20. 4 goes into 25 times. So it goes 1350 times. So this is equal to 1350 over x minutes to drain, to drain the 5400 gallon pool. Now, how much has drained out of the 4000 gallon pool at that point? Well, we're going to be draining 2x gallons gallons per minute. And how long are we going to be doing that for? Well, we're going to do it until, or we're going to be watching this experiment, until this pool is completely drained. And we figured out this is how long it takes to drain it, 1350 over x minutes. So if we're going to be pumping out at 2x gallons per minute in the smaller pool, because we have two pumps, so 2x gallons per minute times this many minutes, times 1350 over x minutes, this is going to tell us how many gallons have pumped out of the 4,000 gallon pool. So the x's cancel out. You have an x in the numerator, an x in the denominator. The minutes cancel out, so our answer will be in gallons. So it's 2 times 1350. So what do we get? We get, we get 20, what is that? 2,700 gallons. That's how much has been pumped out of the 4,000 gallon pool, right? This is how much has been pumped out. 2x times 1350 over x is 2700. That's how much has been pumped out. So, but they're asking us how much how many gallons are left in the smaller pool. So, if we started with 4000 and we subtract 2700, that's going to be 1300 gallons are left in the pool. That is choice A. Problem 29. Use the graph below to answer the question that follows. Let me switch colors. Let's ease the monotony. The graph above shows the distance d in miles and the time t in minutes for six bus routes around a city. Which of the following equations best models the relationship between d and t for these bus routes? So these are different bus routes. It's almost a line. I mean, we can kind of we do it in a light color so I don't mess up the graph. But we could see, you know, I see a line that looks something, it looks something like that right there. If I had to fit a line into there, but let's see which of the following equations best models the relationship. So t is equal to d. What would that look like? That line. I'll do it in. I'll do it in this light green color. T is equal to d. So when t is equal to 10, d is equal to 10. When t is equal to 20, d is equal to 20. T is equal to 30, D is equal to 30. So that's this line right here. This line right here. That doesn't seem to model these black dots too well, so it's not going to be that answer. Let me do another one. T is equal to D plus 10. So if we start at 10, so when T when D is 0, T will be 10, right there. When D is 10, D will be 20. Right? D plus 10, 20. When it's when D is 20, T will be 30. So it's going to look like this. Well, this is a little, it's an improvement, but it still doesn't look that great to me. So let's just, yeah, it's probably not that. T is equal to 2D. Well, 2D, when, when you're 0, you're at 0. When T is equal to 10, you're going to be at 20. When T is equal to tw 20, you're going to be at 40. So it's going to go like something like this. It's going to look something 
oh, 40 right here. It's going to look something like this, which is close. It seems to have the right slope. Well, let's look at the last choice. So that I'm guessing the last choice is going to get us right there. t is equal to 2d plus 10. Let me do this in blue, because I have a feeling this is the right answer. So we start at 10. When d is 0, t is 10. And then we go up by 2d. Or another way you could think of it, when d is 10, we get 2 times 10 plus 10. We're going to go to 30. When d is 20, 2 times 20 plus 10 is 50. We're going to be at 50. So the line looks something like this. It will look like it will look like that, which is a pretty good fit of the curve. It's definitely the best out of the four choices. So I'll go with d. Next question. Let's see. Are there any questions on this page? No. Next page. Next question. Let's see. Use the graph below to answer the question that follows. Okay, they've drawn us a little line. They've drawn some points on the line. The graph above represents the equation wx plus 4y is equal to minus 12. What is the value of w? So they're essentially, I mean, they gave us two points, so we can easily figure out, we could figure out actually the equation of this line, which might be, but maybe we don't have to go that far. So if we could just write this line in y is equal to mx plus b form, and maybe if we just figure out the slope of the line, that's be, that'll be enough. So they were said that the line is wx plus 4y is equal to minus 12. If we subtract, I just want to put it into the standard mx plus b form. So if we, re, if we subtract wx from both sides, we get 4y is equal to minus wx minus 12. And then divide both sides by 4, you get y is equal to minus w over 4x minus 3. So this is the equation of the line, and we have to figure out what w is. This right here, minus w over 4, is the slope of the line. So let's figure out what the slope is. Slope is just change in x. Slope is equal to change in x over, sorry, is equal to change in y. Change in y over change in x. Rise over run. How much do you change in y when you change a certain amount in x? So in this case, it's going to be equal to, let's take this as our first point. So we take the y's. 2 minus minus 3, 2 minus minus 3 over, right? That's the change in y. 2 minus minus 3, right? And then the second one, we use the 2 as a first point here, so I'll use the, the Minus 4 is the first point to the denominator. Minus 4 minus this x value is 0. So the slope here is equal to 2 minus minus 3. That's the same thing as 2 plus 3, which is just 5 over minus 4. So this is the slope. So 5 over minus 4 has to be the same thing as minus w over 4. So you could start, or we could write minus 5 fourths is equal to minus w over 4. You could pattern match that immediately, that w's got to be equal to 5. You could also solve for w, but let's just do the pattern matching. That makes it easier.